Hey everybody, welcome back to my Jury Bunch. Today we're going to cover some of the vanilla Blender settings and what happens when you first open up Blender 3.0 for the first time. So this video is mainly geared towards people who've never used Blender or are very new to Blender and you want a little bit of assistance in helping you get around navigating Blender, finding out what all the things are for and what they do. And I'm going to try to make this as quick and painless as possible. And of course, while you're here, check out my channel. There you're going to find a whole lot of playlists and videos covering clock repair, watch repair, jewelry design, jewelry repair, and other things. 3D printing, getting ready for casting, things like that. So if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like this video, by the time you watch it, oh, hit the like button because it does help my channel grow. Thanks a lot, and let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to say one thing. This video is really meant for the beginner. So if you're an absolute beginner to Blender and you're just discovering Blender 3.0, uh, you know, listen, have fun with it. Learn it, play with it. I'm gonna show you here how to get around and navigate through Blender's tabs and features. Uh, it's not really, this video is not really meant to get you starting with modeling or special effects or anything like that. It's really meant just to get you used to the interface. And I will be covering many more things over the next few weeks about how to start modeling, how to do some special effects, do some animating, game model designs, things like that. Jewelry designs, all the things that I typically do with Blender and what I've been using them for. Don't get lost in the creep of features that you can get kind of caught up in um, just stick with one thing at, at a time and get good at it because you're going to find that over time you're going to learn all the keyboard shortcuts that you need to know to navigate relatively quickly and this is a fun program to use once you're used to it let's have some fun and let's get started when you first open blender 3.0 for the first time this will be the screen that's introduced to you now, if you have a previous version of Blender, you'll see here it'll say load 2.93 settings or whatever version you have, or you could just say save new settings and whatever the new settings are or the default settings are will be set in Blender. So I'm going to hit the save new settings and we'll just start from scratch. Okay, so when you open up Blender for the first time, it can look very daunting. This, this is a very intimidating program because it does so much, but don't be afraid of it. First and foremost, remember to start small. So one thing that is a problem with Blender is you can get feature creep. And by feature creep, I mean you could get lost in all the abilities and functions that this program has in it, all the features and add-ons that you can stick into here and uh, kind of get lost with what you were attempting to do in the first place. So most people will use Blender for modeling. A lot of people will use it for 3D modeling for games. A lot of people will use it for texture painting, UV mapping, and other things. And for instance, I'm going to go through that list up here. If we look at the menu here, we have these five options up here in the upper left corner. And then we have layout tabs for layout, modeling, sculpting, UV, texture paint, so on. And you can see here's the default list that fits on my screen. You may have more or less depending on your screen size. And then there's this little plus button here. If we click on that, these are additional tabs and working environments to do other things. For instance, general, um, you, can, you can come over here and select different layouts. Basically, these are the same thing that appear on your up, the upside of the screen. Um, 2D animation, if, you, if that's what you're into. Sculpting, uh, video effects. Um, this is mostly like what the movie industry uses for film effects or video effects. And then we have video editing. Now, Blender is a video editor or has a video editor built into it. However, I would say if you're into video, video editing, you're already using a better program than what's, what this is capable of doing. So when we look at this main screen here, you'll see we have some functions here, some buttons, options. And what you can do if you want to, you can extrude these out by clicking on that little line there. And you can basically give yourself a little cheat to what these do. For instance, box select. And that is, I can put my mouse in the 3D work area and I can drag it and box select something. If I want to kind of get this cube selected, I could box select it. Or if I want to grab a couple of things, I can do that. I can select my cursor, and by doing that, I can put my cursor wherever I want it. This is the 3D cursor, and I'm just going to put that back in the middle. So typically, your 3D cursor is stuck in the center, and you can denote that by the red and white circle with the lines through it. That is the 3D cursor. You can align objects to that 3D cursor or place objects at a 3D cursor wherever you put it. Then we have the move option here, which I can grab this, grab the little... Uh, 
arrows and move things around. So for instance, if I grab this cube, you can see I have a blue, red, and green arrow, which correspond to the Z, X, and Y coordinates. X being the red, Y being green, and blue being up and down or along the Z axis. We have a rotation selection here, which allows me to grab something and kind of rotate it. We have a scale option, which gives you little cubes at the end of those lines. And if I grab one of those, I can just kind of stretch it along uh, the, any of the axes. Now you can see it's only stretching along right now the Y axis, but I can change this if I want to, and I'm not gonna confuse you, but I can come up here to where it says global. I could change that to local, and then you see the angle of that. Uh, those boxes will change and allow me to stretch it along the normal faces of the cube. Then we have a transform function, which basically is all of them. So I have access to every single one of these move, rotate, and scale options. So I could grab the scale thing and scale it up here. I can move this with the arrow keys and then I can rotate it with the rotation tools. So if that is more convenient for you, you could use that. You have an annotation marker where you could actually draw something or circle something. And then we have a measure tool uh, so I could basically draw a line from one point to another to see how long it is, and it gives you kind of a length. And then add a cube, if we do that, it'll just basically add a cube somewhere along our space. So if I wanna add something to this cube, for instance, I come over here, I select it, hold my left mouse button, and I can drag this up or down and kind of add a little object to that face. So I'm gonna go back to box select, and then we're gonna go back to new general and just kind of put us back in the, uh, the main screen. So anytime you make a mistake, if you're, if you're just playing around, don't worry, you can't really mess things up. Anytime you get anything moved around in your scene, you wanna go back, just go to File, New, General, and it brings back the original scene that you were working on. Remember, this is the default scene that 3.0 comes with. So these are our menu options. We have the file menu, and these are the options here. I encourage you to go look at those. You have your edit options or edit menu. We have the render tab or render uh, if you want to render this particular scene. We have the window keys so you can open a new window, uh, a new main window, toggle full screen, things like that. And then we have our help menu, which brings you to the website for tutorials, manuals, and support. Now, under the layout tools or these options for uh, these, these basically are forms for, your, for Blender that change depending on what you want to do. So if I want to change to a, a modeling only option, I can come over here to modeling and that brings up my modeling functions. And again, if you want to see what all of these functions do here, I encourage you to come over, use your mouse, drag over so that you open that enough so that you can see what these do. This will give you some time to get used to these. And you can see here, if I hit the spin button, I can spin this just like that. And that allows you to make you know, little modifications in your modeling layout. If I wanted to do sculpting, I can come over here to sculpting. For instance, I have this particular model here, and if I wanted to sculpt it, I could start sculpting with this little circle key. However, there's things to know about sculpting, and I'm not gonna get into it now. I just wanna show you where it is. We can come over here and make some changes by selecting brushes. And again, we can make this, we can make this tab just a little bit longer so that we can see what the words are here. And it tells us, you know, for instance, this is draw, draw sharp, clay. And then I can come over here and, and add functions to, or add sculpting uh, functions to my model. Now this model is not uh, really laid out for sculpting, so I'm not gonna bother here. I'm just gonna show you the layout. So that's it for sculpting. Let's move on to UV editing. So we go to the UV editing tab. Now UV editing is a little bit different. So this is used mostly for the gaming industry. So if you are going to create or want to go and start creating gaming assets, you're gonna to have to get used to how to use the UV editor and a couple other features in uh, built into Blender. So UV editing is way more complicated than I can explain here. So I'm gonna move on to the next tab, which is texture painting. Now texture painting allows you to basically paint a model with a color. So I could select a color over here, come over and paint the model depending on how I have it set up. Shading is something I don't particularly use. <clears throat> But um, 
some people use shading nodes to create uh, different types of textures on their models. So you would typically use a shading model here. And these are made up of nodes. And if you're not familiar with nodes, we'll, we'll get into that in a future video. But nodes are um, like little tools that you can add to a particular model that gives you control over how it appears when rendered. Animation. Um, animation is another big thing used in the gaming industry. You can actually create uh, characters, uh, whether they're people or dogs for games or video games, or just, you know, 3D animations. And you can render them out here, create like a running character or a running horse or a fighting figure, and then save those animations and import those into a video game. So we'll get into that again later. Rendering is basically what it says. If I want to render a, a, an object that I have a texture or a, if I've painted it, for instance, if I come over to layout, let's just add in a sphere. Uh, I'm going to add in a UV sphere. We're going to make that bigger. And I'm going to give it a new color. Let's see. Let's create new. And let's make this a light blue will give it a metallic texture so I can come over here and adjust these we'll lower the roughness and if I go over to the renders preview you can see how my image looks when it's rendered and so that's a quick view of rendering but I'm not going to get into that compositing I don't know a lot about compositing myself so I'm not going to get into it now new in blender 3.0 are geometry nodes geometry nodes are like shader nodes but they're more for geometry where you can actually reshape your model in certain respects and again i'm going to play with this so i get more familiar with it and then i'll do a video on this scripting if you want to write add-ons for blender or do some python scripting this is the layout for scripting if you want to use that that's a little more complicated and requires some coding so you must be familiar with, at least with python to develop uh, code for Python and in some cases you can run scripts that make life a whole lot easier to do like uh, if you want to apply a certain function to a whole lot of different objects you can do it here in scripting without having to do it one at a time for your objects then again we have uh, 2d animation so if I wanted to come over and create some 2d animations I can go into that format again this is for 2d drawing or 2d animations kind of like cartoons and we've got video effects if I wanted to basically create video effects, which one of Blender's strong points is video effects or special effects for videos. And then we have our video editing system, which to be honest with you, I don't use. So basically this would look like your basic video editor. There are a lot of other free video editors that are much more powerful and I would kind of recommend those instead of Blender, but if you need something quick and easy, it is built into Blender. Okay, so I'm back over to the layout. Now let's just go back to our sample screen here. I'm gonna create a new one. So we're back to our default layout. And you'll see with Blender 3.0, it, uh, it comes with a timeline at the bottom. Now the timeline is used to create animations. If I wanna animate this particular cube to do something, I can do it along the timeline. For instance, rotate it and then run this and it'll create a simple, real quick animation. So if you don't need that animation tab here, how do I get rid of it? Because you really, with Blender, you can't just get rid of it. I can bring it down to the bottom, but it's always here. So how to get rid of it, you put your mouse in the corner here where the little plus sign is. You click and hold with the left mouse button and drag down, and you can see that's gone. Now, if I want to add that back in, I can come down here with my mouse again, put my mouse in the corner. I get a little plus sign, click and hold the left mouse button, drag up and it'll create a new 3D window. And from here, you can select this tab here, this option, and basically bring in any of these forms to work with. If I wanted a spreadsheet, if I wanted to go to, let's say, the asset browser, which I just did a video on. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it in the upper right corner. Uh, file browser, so you've got all these options. Here's your timeline, and Nonlinear animations, that's a more advanced way to do animations. Uh, the geo, uh, geometry node editor, it can, you can put whatever you want, wherever you want it. And now I can do that to just about any location on the screen. So if I come over here to the upper left corner, I can drag that over. And then I can make this my, uh, let's say I wanted to make it an image editor. There we go. So you can work with any of these to make your screen as easy to use or as complicated as you want. 
To get rid of these again, just put your, your cursor up where that little plus sign goes and then I can drag it over and hide that. Just like so. Okay, so that's it for the uh, upper part of the tabs where you can change your working environment. Now let's come over here to the 3D uh, area. This is called the 3D viewport. And here's an important note, any add-ons that you put into Blender will appear on what they call the end tab. Now the end tab is when you press the end key on your keyboard with your cursor in the 3D viewport, a bunch of tabs show up here. For instance, if we have this cube selected, we have the item tab, which gives us the information regarding our cube. The, if we come over to tools, these are the things that we can do out of the box with the vanilla blender to our cube. And then we have the viewing options, which allows us to uh, basically set up our viewport how we want it. If you install any add-ons to Blender, 99% of them will appear here in the end tab. You'll get a new little tab here with the heading of your add-on, and it will show up here for you to use. To get rid of that, just press the end key again, and it goes away. Okay, so some quick features. If I wanna look at this screen from the top down, I have three options to do that. On your keyboard, you can press the tilde key, which is the key just left of the one key. If you press the tilde key, it brings up an orbital menu, and I can go to top view, front view, back, right, view selected, or view from camera. So for instance, if I wanna to go to the top view, I can select top, and now I'm looking straight down at my cube. Okay, that's one way to do it. And I can rotate my mouse at any time by holding the center button down in the 3D viewport and move my mouse around. And that gives me a rotational view of our cube. And now we can go back to this section, which is the second way to get to our view. For instance, if I want to look at this from the top down, I can press the Z, looks at it from the top. If I want to look at it from the side, I can press the X. Or from the other side, I can press the Y. Now, that also gives you the opposite views, negative X, negative, negative X, negative Z, and of course, if we come over here, I can go to negative Y and look at it from the bottom. So you have these, these quick little buttons here that you can view in different perspectives. Now, the third way to navigate from a top view, side view, whatever you wanna do, is the numeric keypad on your keyboard. If you have a numeric keypad, which is the numbers off to the right of your keyboard, you can press the one, three, seven, nine keys and rotate them around. So for, for instance, if I wanna look at this from the front view, I'll press the one key. And if I wanna to go to the opposite side, I press the nine and it rotates at 180 degrees. The nine key is basically your inverted view. So one, seven, and three, we'll look at it from three different perspectives. If I go press the five key, it goes back into perspective mode and I can look at that basically from perspective or linear view by pressing the five on and off. And you'll see it kind of deforms your model, but it's giving you a more accurate view of it. So that's the simple 3D viewport. Now, if we go over here, now you can see these are all the options that we have to modify both our viewport, our settings, and our model modifications. For instance, this little wrench here brings us to our basic settings. Now, you're probably never going to use it. I use it very infrequently. I'm sure some people do. The next one is our render properties. And if I hold my mouse down, you'll see it says render properties. And if I click on that, it gives us a setting or a list of settings and options that we have for rendering. For instance, we have two engines that we can use. And if you have um, a Windows PC and you're using the Microsoft Windows version of Blender, you also get the benefit of uh, Cycles X. On, a, on an Apple computer, unfortunately, you don't get that yet. It may come out uh, soon with the, Apple, uh, with the Apple Silicon chip. However, <clears throat> we have the EV modeling, which is quick and dirty rendering. And we have a Cycles rendering system. Now, Cycles is a much more accurate render system. It gives you a much more realistic image but it is slower. It is significantly slower than Eevee. So if you want quick renders, just use Eevee. There are some limitations to Eevee. It doesn't render glass very well. Um, or if, for instance, I do a lot of jewelry designs, it doesn't really render anything translucent or transparent very well. And here we have uh, all our settings for our render options. I'm not gonna get into those now, but they're here. Okay, the next one would be our format size. And this is basically if we want to create a render of a specific size and our viewport options, if we want it 100% or lower, the aspect ratio, which typically will be one to one, 
um, render region, which allows us to, if we want, look at it from a camera, and then we can select render region. And if we're looking at it through the viewport of the camera on our viewport screen, it only renders what's in this camera view. The frame rate we choose, for instance, if you're going to do animations and you want those at 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, you can select that here. You can go higher than that, of course, and select that. Now, this also works with things like the video editor or special effects, VFX, so keep that in mind. Then we have our frame range for our animations. We also have time stretching if you want to stretch it out a little bit, stereo. Stereo copy, which we get into later, and then output. For instance, if we want to save our animations or pictures in a certain folder, we would select it here. Now, the next one we come up to is our layer settings, and these are our layer properties. Now, I don't typically use these. Um, sometimes you will, depending on what you're designing, and we'll get into those in another video. The next setting would be our, our measurement settings or our scene settings. And here we can change the most important thing depending on what unit format you're working with, if it's in metric or uh, imperial, and what size objects you're working with. Whether, For instance, I work in millimeters. A lot of 3D printers work in millimeters. So if you're working with small objects, you want to set that to millimeters. I think I have a video. Actually, I know I have a video on how to set this up. Uh, for Blender 2.9 and it works the same in Blender 3.0 so I'll put a link again in the upper right corner if you want to set this up for a different scale format. This next tab is called World Viewport Settings. Now the World Viewport Settings if we come over here and we're looking at, at our viewport if I render this out you'll see that it comes out in a dark format. So there's our format. It's kind of dark background, but I can change this to be almost anything I want using this, this area here. So I can come over and change the, if I want to have an emissions or a background tech, if I want to change the color, I can come over here and maybe lighten up the color of my viewport for rendering. Now it's only going to be for the rendering system. It won't be for our working environment. So you can see that's still dark. Uh, but in our render environment, it does give us a light background. So anything you change here will show up in the rendering area. Now you can add a background image for HDI images if you want a more realistic render. And that would be done here by clicking on the color and coming over to environment texture and then picking an HDR color. And I'll get into that again in another video. There's our strength where we can increase the light emissions for our environment. Um, one is fine for beginners and then you can play with that as you move along. Then you can set up things like your volume, your viewport display color if you want to change that and other custom properties. Here's our collections area and the collections area again if you're getting into more advanced modeling you'll start using this however for beginners I wouldn't worry about this just yet. With our cube selected, now we can come down to the properties for the cube. Any, anything that we can change with the cube here will be listed from this point here, this little square box with the corners marked on it, down. So for instance, this particular area is the information about our cube. The next one, the wrench, this is the modifiers tab. And these are all things that we can do or add to our cube to make it uh, slightly different. For instance, if I come over here to uh, if I come over to the wireframe view so we can see what a modifier will do, if I wanted to add a subsurface division to this, I can come over here and add a subsurface division, which gives us a much more de defined model. And you can see it basically adds in more detail to our cube. Under levels, I can increase the level and you can see it's going to give us much more of a round model. I'm going to get rid of that for now and we'll stick with our cube. Another one to, that you can get an idea of how it works is called remesh. For instance, if I hit the remesh and I hit uh, voxel and then 0.01 as default, you can see it remodels our mesh from basically six sides to however many faces this particular model has. And you can change that with smooth, with sharp. You can come over here and decrease its volume or increase its volume depending on how you want your model to be worked with. Now we would typically remesh a model that we were going to be sculpting. So for instance, if I needed a high definition model, I would add in a remesh modifier and maybe bring this up to, let's say five or six. And that would give me a nice cube that I could go and sculpt with. And the, to apply that, we just hit this little arrow down here and then apply and now our model has that particular uh, structure to it. And if I press the tab key to go into edit mode, 
you can see here's our model here with all of those new faces and vertices. So that's one thing to consider, and we're going to get into modeling in the next video. We have a partic particle system. Particle systems are good for VFX, or if you want to add particles like smoke or fire or water to a, a, a certain scene in your 3D viewport, the particle system is good for that. We have a physics property. Now, physics property allows you to create certain things out of your models. If you're going to use like a blank model or a blank, blank cube and create a cloth, fluid, soft body, fi force fields, fire, you've, you've got all those options under physics. And again, we'll get into that in more detail later. The next one is our object constraints. Object constraints allow you to take more than one object and, and like link them together or basically make an object so that you can't change it at a certain, a certain way or a certain point. And we'll get into that again in a future video. Vertex groups are something that you'll use when you get into much more advanced modeling or animations. Vertex groups are used for things uh, like character animations, advanced modeling, things like that, where you can go in there and tweak certain groups on your model to do certain things. And then, of course, we have the uh, properties for the texture or color of the model. For instance, if I want to change the color from white, I can change this to red. And when we go into rendered view or preview mode, you can see I've changed that object to red. And here's our material. This is basically adding material to your model. Again, we can change it to whatever color we want. And we can create multiples by just simply clicking the plus or minus keys to delete them. If I wanted to create a new one here, I just hit plus, material two, and I can make this yellow and leave it at that. And the last thing I want to cover is texture properties. Texture properties works with texture painting. So for instance, if I wanted to add in, um, if I wanted to take a texture from a file and then paint it onto my model, I would add in here I would create a new texture. I could come down to image or movie file. I could create a new image right here and basically load it. So if I could find one, I would create a new image or find an image. I believe I have one on my... So, so here I have this cork texture. So if I select that, double click it, it brings in my cork texture. And now I can paint this cork texture in texture mode. So this video was really meant to be a 20,000 foot view of uh, Blender 3.0 and how to navigate around it. Um, anybody who is familiar with Blender, please don't leave any nasty comments because there's a lot of people every day that are starting to use Blender 3.0 or Blender, any version of Blender, and they're just getting started out. So let's encourage everybody to get used to these programs, how to use them, where to go to find stuff, and uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel as I'm going to be putting out videos at least every other day on how to use Blender 3.0. And I'm going to be tr trying to cover some beginner stuff all the way to advanced stuff. Stay tuned, subscribe, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Check out some of my other videos. I'm sure you'll find them helpful. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.